How do you prepare for a chemical spill? Hi, I'm Cody with Parcel Safety. With the Ohio train derailment, we've been getting a lot of questions about our equipment, what works for protecting against these chemicals getting into the atmosphere and, and, and coming down. Although that is a major part, and we appreciate that everybody's reaching out and asking about this, there are a lot of steps that need to be taken when you're thinking about chemical spills. So we wanna talk about when a potential chemical spill can happen, how to plan for a chemical spill, what to do when a chemical spill happens, and of course, what equipment you may need when dealing with a chemical cleanup. So first, when can a chemical spill happen? So since we're talking about the train derailment, obviously when you're transporting dangerous chemicals, that's a, a big time when something could happen. Uh, you don't have control over other drivers on the street, potential problems with the rail. So if it's in a truck or if it's in a train, you might actually get into a situation where there could be a chemical spill. But there are also time in a lot of different industries that you may be working in where a chemical spill could happen. Industrial setting, manufacturing with plastics, textiles, anything that a chemical might come off of, uh, oil and gas, or in an agricultural setting such as ammonia, when you're dealing with ammonia on a farm. Of course, in a laboratory setting or a healthcare setting, you're, you might be dealing with dangerous chemicals when you're trying to do special cleanups and sterilize a, a certain area. Now we're gonna talk about how you should plan for a chemical spill. First step is identify the chemicals that you are either uh, using or you're storing. So you typically record these on a material safety data sheet. This way that everyone knows that these are the chemicals that you're dealing with or you are transporting. Second, you need to assess the risk, such as determine the likelihood that the chemical spill may happen, potential severity of the chemical spill, and of course, you need to identify the areas that are the highest risk in your facility. Next, develop a spill response plan. That includes procedures for reporting, containment, and cleanup of a spill. The plan should also identify your team members that are gonna be responsible for cleanup or dealing with the chemical spill and the roles and responsibilities of each member. Fourth, you need to establish a spill response team. This team is designated to deal with the response at immediate notice. They're gonna be prepared, they're gonna be trained to make sure that the chemical cleanup is done properly. Fifth, you should post warning signs. When you're dealing with these dangerous chemicals, everyone should know that there are dangerous chemicals present and that there could be a potential of chemical spill occurring. Finally, you need to acquire spill response equipment and train your team how to use it. So some of this equipment includes PPE, such as respirators and hazmat suits, a spill kit, and containment materials. Now, what should you do when a chemical spill actually happens? In the event of a chemical spill, you need to take immediate action to protect those around you and the environment and properties around you. First, evacuate the area immediately. Second, assess the situation. Third, contain the spill. Fourth, clean up the spill. Fifth, report the spill. Finally, investigate the cause so the spill doesn't happen again. Finally, we wanna talk about the equipment that you may need when you're dealing with a chemical spill. Again, over the past week, we've been having a lot of people ask, what's the proper respirator, suit, all the things that you may need when you're dealing with a chemical spill. And today we're gonna to talk about that a little bit more in depth. So we're gonna talk about the respirators first and the filters that you might need. So the number one respirator I recommend is our industrial PD-101. This is because a lot of times you're gonna be in an industrial setting. It's not necessarily a doomsday. You don't need all the butyl rubber, all these things that you might need in a like a nuclear situation. You're gonna need a very agile, flexible respirator that has the capability of taking a bunch of different types of filters and that's why I recommend the PD-101 because it does take industry standard bayonet. So I would recommend our PD-101 respirator and I would also pair them with our Max Pro P3O filters. These are ABEK2 P3 rated. What that basically means is they're great for acetic gas, inorganic vapor, and ammonia derivatives. So if you're dealing in an agriculture setting or an industrial setting or a transportation setting, these are gonna get the job done. We do have the 40 millimeter, uh, which does have filter out higher concentrates. If you're dealing with high concentrate or not well ventilated areas, and then the back of a train car or, or inside the back of a truck actually then you might want to do something that has A2, B2, E2, K2 so that you can actually filter out as much chemicals as possible. In that situation, you might want to go with like our ST100X or MB100 and go with the Defense Pro MB1 filter. Let's talk about the hazmat suit. So we do offer a very high quality hazmat suit, um, but you can definitely go around and shop around and find some. This right here, this guy right here is our heat resistant and water resistant hazmat suit. It's great for uh, chemical spills. It has a butyl rubber seal up here and on the the zipper down here. It does feature fully sealed booties here so that it helps basically make sure you're fully sealed when you're dealing with the chemical. That combined with one of our respirators is gonna be a great option for you when you're dealing with the chemical spill cleanup. Now, something that's not being talked about a lot is what happens if these chemicals catch on fire? You know, when a chemical catch on fire, sometimes water can't put them out. And sometimes even your fire extinguisher might not be able to put them out. 
we would recommend then investing in a fire extinguisher blanket. So this is our silicone coated one. We also have non-silicone for a little bit more affordable option. If you see a chemical fire, you can just take this out and just throw it over the fire and it'll suppress it immediately. Definitely recommend having this around. You never know when the chemicals might catch on fire. So just remember, you need to make sure you have the proper plan in place to deal with these chemical spills. This is gonna include understanding when a chemical spill could happen. That, that could be transportation or in the manufacturing agriculture industries. Making sure that everybody in your team is properly aware of what needs to be done if a chemical spill occurs and that they have the proper equipment and know how to use it. One last thing I wanna emphasize is after you've evacuated the area, make sure you contact your emergency response teams. Now you can basically search on Google, find emergency response teams near me, and you're gonna find somebody that probably deals with chemical spills, but it'd be nice to make sure you have those contacts present and ready to go should a chemical spill ever occur. If you find this video helpful, follow Parcel Safety for more tips on dealing with chemical spills or anything that you might need for respiratory or personal protective equipment. Also, click the links below if you wanna purchase one of our respirators or our hazmat suits or our fire safety blankets. We'll do our best to get out to you as soon as possible, and we appreciate the support.